Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 34th episode of VisionCon Live, your go-to nerdy talk show. I'm your host, Zach Wilson, but much more importantly, you didn't come here to see me today. You came to see the woman of the hour. She's Kaguya from Naruto Shippuden, Joyce Price from Life is Strange, Fury from Darksiders 3, just to name a few. She's the award-winning legend who radiates both talent and kindness alike. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the one. The only Sissy Jones. Sissy, how you doing today? God, can you just follow me around and introduce me everywhere I go? That was amazing. Oh, it'd be a deep <laughs> honor. And I think we just had a new addition to the group. Well, who was that down there? Oh, that was my cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we got to do anything without him. <laughs> for sure, for sure. We got a big show tonight. So without further ado, Sissy. As I mentioned in the intro, you're an award-winning performer, you know, known across the world for your plethora of roles throughout the years. But I want to know, how did we get here? You know, was this always the plan growing up, or did something happen down the line that got you here? No, you know, it's funny. I remember being about six and telling my dad I wanted to be an actress, and he was like, no, 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 mm -mm. <laughs> And uh, so I... I got a business degree. I went to school in Oregon. I got a degree in business and Spanish and uh, graduated right after the bubble burst in 02 and uh, moved to Northern California, um, worked in tech for 10 years, super hated my life, like super hated my life. And uh, I was talking with my now husband one day about dream jobs. And I was like, God, I'd love to be a voice on the Simpsons. But I probably just got to live in Hollywood. Meh. And then, no kidding, two weeks later, I heard Nancy Cartwright, who was Bart Simpson, like, you guys in San Francisco are so lucky. You have one of the best voiceover schools in the country right in your backyard. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I called that day. I started taking classes that week. And two years later, I had an agent and I was able to quit my job and pursue voiceover full time. Oh my God. And so just kind of one thing led to another. And just now we're here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, when it's right, it's like a zipper. It just, it just goes together, I like right? That. And when it's wrong, you just keep hitting your head against the brick wall. So <laughs> I found my zipper. <laughs> I love that. Now is uh, Simpsons definitely a goal one day? I mean, sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, who would? Right. For me and a million other people living in LA. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. But you already have, you know, quite the list of accolades and a few characters I do want to touch on real quick. The first of which we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about which is Kaguya from Naruto Shippuden. Now, for those of you who aren't caught up on Naruto, you know, yeah, it's been a, a while, but if you want to kind of come back after a little bit, you know, you won't miss much. But I did want to talk about Kaguya. Now, Kaguya, as we all know, those of us who are caught up on Naruto, is being the ultimate uh, plot twist of the entire series. Turns out that, you know, all this time we thought Madara was, you know, the big antagonist, whereas no, 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 no just a pawn in Kaguya's game. So I did want to ask, you know, how was it like, you know, voicing the main antagonist for one of the most popular animes, that being Naruto? It was unreal. I mean, I remember when I got the call that I booked it. And, you know, I watched Naruto when I was working in the Silicon Valley. Like, before I was ever into voiceover, my husband and I would sit and watch it for hours because every fight scene takes, you know, 13 episodes. Um, <laughs> and I just, I loved it. I I thought it was such great storytelling and, um, you know, it, I just, I loved it. And so when I got the call to go in, it was under some fake name. It was like, you're going to read for Project Closet. And I was like, okay. And then I got in there and they're like, yeah, you're the big bad in Naruto. And I was like, what? I'm oh. sorry, what? Like I had to sit down. <laughs> oh my God. And um, they told me a story. Yeah, it was amazing. They told me her story and like, how, you know, she kind of goes through this arc with her kids and then, you know, Naruto and Sasuke kind of become like her like vision of her kids then, I don't know. And I was like, I, I, can, I can die happy. I'm good, like, I'm good. thanks guys. I mean, please don't, cause I'd still like to work, but holy <laughs> crap, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find that a lot of people, you know, I'm sure a lot of people know you from a majority, you know, of different works that you've done throughout the years, but do you find that a lot of people know you as Kaguya? Uh, less so. I mean, some, yes. Um, actually, I'm getting my first Funko. Uh, <laughs> Kaguya is getting a Funko Pop, which I'm super excited about. Um, but she's one of my lesser commented roles. 
Okay. Believe it or not. I mean, she was only in like, what, five or six episodes at the very end, so. Sure. sure. I mean, she definitely That's paved fine. the way. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely paved the way to now, where, now where we're at at Boruto being, you know, the, her race, the Ototsuki race says definitely, you know, doing the waves in Boruto and Kaguya is all that we have to thank for that. Now, I did want to talk about another character that, you know, Kaguya definitely, you know, definitely a bad guy, but definitely also is a little bit more level-headed than the next, next character. I want to talk about Fury from Darksiders 3. Now, Darksiders, as we all know, one of the most popular third-person action games around. Yep, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so one of the most popular third-person action games, you know, around recently. And I did want to ask you how it was being the angriest of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, Fury. Oh my God, dream come true. <laughs> dream come true. And uh, again, it was a super roundabout way that I ended up getting that role because I actually auditioned for the reveal trailer before they had started recording the game. And so um, I auditioned Hello Brother and with pleasure for the reveal trailer and that was it. And then I booked that and the reveal trailer did really well. It got like 4 million views in like a minute. And, um, and then I was like, well, they're making the game, right? I, I sure would like to be considered for the, for the actual role. So I found friends that knew people at gunfire. I was like, please call them. Like I did the trailer. I'd love to be considered. Let's do this. And so they put me through my paces, man. We went through three or four rounds of auditions and then they finally like gave me the okay. And it was such a joy. It was such a joy to work on. You know, I really didn't understand the lore of the game before I got into it. And then once I was there, I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. And it was such a fun project. You know, the, the devs from Texas would fly up and, you know, they're like, all right, let's get into Fury. And it's just all of a sudden I get this brown in my face. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, just getting my inner angry. It was a really great therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> getting it all out. Well, it definitely deviated from the norm of the series so far, whereas the one and two were definitely the more, you know, Metrovania, you know, Legend of Zelda-esque, where you go in these pseudo dungeons, get new powers, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas Darksiders 3 definitely had more of a, you know, a Dark Souls, Bloodborne kind of feel to it. But while playing this game, I mean, there are some powerful moments in that game where, you know, you, you, know, you voice Fury and like she says these, impactful things but i gotta ask how sore was your voice after some of those recordings man after the uh the rampage scene mm -hmm. i was like i'm gonna need a minute <laughs> i need a minute mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah there were some pretty brutal sessions in there but they were always really good to make sure that they didn't you know push me to a point of breakage which not all producers will do um so it, they were just lovely, like beyond lovely. And then I got to go to PAX West and they had a booth set up and they had um, the Fury cosplay in all the different colors, you know, the red, the orange, the purple, the blue, the yellow. And I have a picture of me on my Instagram. I'm like, yeah, surrounded by like, you know, seven Furies. It was amazing. That's so cool. Insane. Well, and like, speaking of that hoarseness that comes. I was like, where do I get one of those whips? Yeah, right, right. Oh man, those things are insane. But speaking of that hoarseness and the, you know, the damage, you're not damage, but you know, the strain that you put on your voice with those big, you know, lawn and hard recording sessions, do you do anything after or before the fact to kind of prep you for those? Yes, actually, I've been doing a bunch of seminars lately, um, a couple of free ones, and then just a paid one last week. Um, to teach voice actors how to warm up your throat because literally yeah. my entire income comes from this part of my body and it is damage. It's not always just strain. Mm -hmm. um, and if I lose this, I'm SOL, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've been working with this woman named Mindy Pack who developed um, a vocal straw and she does straw phonation warmups for men and for women and for um, non-binary people um, to, to kind of make sure that you're resetting your larynx after every scream and stuff like that. And I had a session maybe three weeks ago that I would have left prior, like bleeding. Literally, they were having me scream so much um, that I was able to get through without bleeding. I was quiet for the rest of the night and then good, ready to rock. Yeah. Um, so I do my straw phonation warmups. I've been taking singing lessons. And then afterwards, you know, when you're singing, you really try to stretch to the, to the edge of your octaves. And afterwards you kind of, you start at the edge of your octaves and you bring it back down to, to where you end up. And that is the cool down. 
um, and I cannot recommend it more highly to anybody else. This it's called the Voice Straw. When you buy the kit, she actually sends you videos for um, warming up and cooling down and everything else. And if you use the code VO2020, um, she will give you a discount. Oh my God. And for so, those of you watching at home, we'll make sure that these links are down in the description below on the YouTube description. But, you know, I do want to talk about probably one that was a little easier uh, in the VO sessions than Fury. And also definitely the opposite end of the spectrum. I want to talk about one of the best video game moms out there. I want to talk about Joyce Price. Uh, now, well, Joyce Price is one I get I get called out for all the time, all the time, and rightfully so. She's just so precious, so adorable, and yet also doesn't take shit from anybody, including Chloe at some times. But I did want to ask, you know, voicing one of the greatest video game moms of all time. Was there anything about Joyce that you kind of emotionally connected with? Yeah, you know, it's funny because when I did the audition, I, I, I was like, well, she's Southern. I don't know why, but I put, I slapped a Southern accent on it and, and that's what booked, even though they're in Oregon. Um, but I kind of had this whole backstory for her in my head that, you know, she was born in the South. Um, she kind of experienced tragedy at a young age and left and like started working in diners kind of making her way west and that's where she met William her first husband and like he moved her up to Oregon you know so I had this whole backstory in my head for her that there was just a sadness about her that permeated everything that she did um you know and I've experienced loss I've had my own tragedies and and it was it was easy to pull on those for her um you know I wasn't a mom at that point but um but working with Ashley Birch I mean how do you go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. now, now, were you necessarily close with Ashley Birch before Life is Strange? Because I know that you guys have definitely retained a definite closeness afterwards, but was there a rapport beforehand or was when you guys first voiced your characters, was the chemistry and such kind of seamless or did it take some time? We were strangers. Um, we were strangers. Uh, we never recorded together. And actually, I, I met her at, she's with my same um, talent agent. I met her at the Christmas party. And I walked past and I was like, hey, I'm your mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and we've worked on several projects since and we've become good friends. And I just, I, I, I adore that woman to the moon and back. She can do no wrong. She's just wonderful. <laughs> well, she had a wonderful mother. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, before we continue, we're kind of approaching the halfway point. So I did want to shout out that plenty of you have already either messaged VisionCon directly, your viewers' comments and questions, or done it in the live chat. If you haven't already, though, you still have plenty of time. Just make sure you do that, as well as if you're in the live chat, make sure to check out a bunch of links connected with Sissy Jones that our great and powerful Elizabeth has put in the chat already. Elizabeth, you're my knight in shining armor. Thank you so much. But with that, we're gonna move on to a character in a game that, ladies and gentlemen, those of you fans of the show or know me personally, you know I make a fool of myself all the time. You're, you're, we're no stranger to that. However, I wanna talk about one of the biggest times I was wrong. And that is, of course, a little game that became a massive game called Firewatch. Now, when this game came out, I remember it vividly, and I saw the trailer and I saw a little bit of gameplay, and I'll admit, I just kind of wrote it off at first as, you know, another little walking simulator, an indie game that would have its heyday and then be gone. And the backlash that I received from saying that was monumental. Plenty were just say, yeah, give it a try, give it a try. Others were a lot more mean. So I was like, you know what, fine, I'll give it a shot. And oh my God, was I wrong. You, you know, granted, you know, the majority of the game are just you and, you know, the male protagonist that, you know, you play as in the game. However, it's the, just the seamless transitions between, you know, segments of the game, your rapport with the main character, the, it, the game's not too, <clears throat> it's funny without being too funny and being campy. And it's also serious without being overwhelming. Right. It is phenomenal. So I wanted to ask you, did you ever imagine that this game would not only be incredibly impactful, but would be so successful and so amazing that your performance uh, on it would, will have won you a BAFTA award as Delilah? So I wanted to ask you, you know, all of those questions. Uh, 
no. <laughs> um, well, I knew I was working with Sean Vanneman and Jake Rodkin, right? They wrote season one of Telltale's The Walking Dead. So I knew it was going to be impactful in that way. Mm. I had no fucking clue, pardon my French, uh, <laughs> that it would go the way that it did. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's one of the only times working in video games that I've gotten to record with my scene partner. So Rich Summer, who voices Henry, built a, a, a recording studio in his home. This is my recording studio and Sean would Skype us in together. So we would actually record it as a conversation. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what actually made the game. Oh, yeah. um, but, you know, we didn't know each other. So the first scene where she's kind of drunk and being a total jerk, that was us getting to know each other, literally. Um, it, was, it was the most amazing experience. The night before it came out, I felt like I was gonna throw up all over the place. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, because I'd never been a lead character in a game before. I'd always just kind of been additional voices or, you know, one-offs and these little things. And um, I was really nervous. And then I woke up at like three in the morning and my Twitter was like going insane. You know, I had like 300 followers and then all of a sudden I had like 2000 and I was like, holy shit, what's happening? <laughs> um, and it was, you know, it's been the joy of a lifetime. It really has. And, and going to BAFTA, God, what an experience. And, and, and you know, to be fair, um, if, if you watch the playback, they don't show my reaction shot because I was, uh, Nolan North had been winning everything for Uncharted 4 and I, I assumed he would win for the BAFTAs. So when they called my name, I screamed, holy shit, at the top of my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was um, so unexpected and so... Uh, just I I will never not love that game it just changed everything for me it opened so many doors and and it was such a joy to do um working with Rich and Sean and and Jake and you know the whole team at Cambo you can't ask for a better time it was really, really great it's definitely such a revolutionary game and it's guys please listen to me because I was so wrong it is not just you know a walking simulator and even if it, it was if that's your thing, you know, go for it. But it is so much bigger than that. And it's on essentially all major platforms. I know at least PS4, because that's how I played it. But I believe it's also on PC, Xbox, what have you. It's a quick Google search away. But oh my God, do I highly recommend it. And before and we- you do, explore. Like don't, don't try to run from A to B and A to B and back and, and go quickly. Take your time and explore. Because there's little Easter eggs everywhere. And it's, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, you'd definitely be a disservice if you just try to speed run the game. You know, no offense to any speedrunners watching right now. But the final thing I did want to talk about before we get to the plug zone is Sissy. Plenty of people watching the show are obviously here to see the great and powerful, successful, what have you, guests that we have on, like the one right before me. However, we have also noticed that plenty of the people are also watching because they're either part of the entertainment industry or are wanting to get into and just kind of need to know what to do to get into it. So for someone as successful as you, the next two questions, I want you to kind of keep that thread in mind. Now, the first question is, you know, something that we all face in our daily lives. That, of course, is rejection. Now, while we do all face that in our daily lives, I think it's pretty easy argument to make that if there was ever an industry that rejection is most prevalent in, it would definitely be yours, which would be the entertainment industry. So, like I said, someone as successful as you, I did want to ask for the folks watching at home, does rejection get any easier? Or if it doesn't, what are some tips that you have that deal with rejection that you would like to share to the folks watching at home? That's a really great question. Um, you know, I, I have definitely developed the superpower to forget auditions and uh, uh, sessions and things like that. I've literally walked in for a session and they're like, oh my God, we loved your audition. I'm like, <laughs> cool, can you play it? And they'll play it and I'll be like, sounds like me. Um, but you know, there are those that you like hold on to and you're like, oh, I really want to book this. Come on, pick me, pick me, pick me. And then they don't. And you never know until you hear it on the airwaves. And then you're like, no oh, shit. Um, it's hard. It sucks. It's, it's probably the, the, my least favorite part of this job, but, um, but it's a big part of the job. And you have to learn to let go of wanting everything that you audition. Um, because if you don't let go of it, you will drive yourself crazy. And the other thing that I do love about voiceover um, that is very unique to voiceover within the entertainment industry is that 
we are chosen based on our acting skills alone. So it doesn't matter what I look like. It doesn't matter um, how much I weigh. It doesn't matter how old I am. It's just what I bring to the character, right? So you have to go out and make sure that you are the best actor possible for the job. And sometimes it's not going to be you. It's going to be your best friend. And sometimes it is going to be you. And sometimes it's going to be that girl that you've heard about. She just got in the business. You know what? And there's so much support amongst voice actors that it's okay. There's enough to go around. It's okay. You're not going to book everything. When your friends book it, celebrate with them. You know, if, if some newbie books it, good for them. They've found their calling. You know what I mean? You have to find peace in that or you will drive yourself insane. <laughs> I mean, I like that. And it's a very wholesome and all-encompassing way to look at it. Now, the second thing is, you know, again, people watching the show either want to get in the entertainment industry or already are and just need to know where to go next. So, Sissy Jones, what advice would you give the folks watching at home that want to get into this industry? Any tips or tricks that you would give them that you wish maybe you had starting out? Yeah. Uh, there is a voice actor named D. Bradley Baker. He does all the animal sounds for everything. He's the, the, the animal noises for Appa in The Last Airbender. Um, the guy is in everything. He put together a website called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com, and it has everything. Coaches, demo producers, steps, acting classes, um, the different genres of voice. I mean, he put everything into this website and I there's nothing I can offer you that will be more complete than what is there in terms of basic steps hey <laughs> my cat really wants to be a part of this um in terms of basic steps acting classes if you can't act you can't do voiceover because it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like no one cares if you have a killer Christopher Walken impression Christopher Walken does a great Christopher Walken um but you have to be able to act um, you know, I, I can't tell you the number of people that come up to me and they're like, everyone says I have a great voice and I should do voiceover. And I'm like, yeah. what can you do with it? Because guaranteed, who can sound exactly like you sound, but they know how to make something interesting happen with it. And if you don't know how to do that, you will not work in voiceover. Well, powerful stuff. And the folks watching at home, hope you're taking notes because now you have all the tools necessary to become the next Sissy Jones. Now, before we get to the plug zone, guys, I got a special thing that I want to make sure that we talk about. Let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. And for those who watched uh, this about two weeks ago episode with Courtney Taylor, this might be a reiteration, but it bears repeating. Or if this is the first time you've joined us, then, you know, we got a treat for you guys. Because right now, I want to talk about a passion project that is near and dear to me and I've recently fallen in love with and something that is very important, especially in uh, the society we live in today. And that is of course, voting. And I can think of no better way, if you haven't already either decided who you're gonna vote for or if, whether or not you're gonna vote or not, then nerds vote. Oop, no, yeah, yeah. sec, nope, oh, hit the wrong button, there it is. Nerds right. vote. So Sissy, I know we had a Courtney Taylor on uh, about two weeks ago to talk about it, but, I, like I said, it bears repeating. Or if you're joining us for the first time, this will be your first intro to this. So, Sissy, give us the run about Nerds Vote. So, Nerds Vote started because Courtney wanted to find a way to get engaged in, you know, um, civic discussions. And she was doing so many conventions and things like that that she wanted to use that as an entree into getting people registered to vote. And so, you know, the plan was that we would go to conventions and help people get registered to vote. Well, COVID. Um, so now, <laughs> you know, they've been working really hard to make sure that people, I hear you. I'm sorry if you guys hear my cat. He's very loud. You're fine. Um, making sure to put out the, enough information that people know how to vote, where to vote, um, where are your polling stations? Here's the, you know, the, the information about the candidates in your area. Um, it's really, really important. You know, in a, in a typical U.S. election, we have about 40% turnout. So that means less than half the people in this country are deciding what direction this country goes in. And that's not okay. You know, I feel like the, the people that are coming up now who have maybe just graduated from high school, who are 18, you know, to 25, you guys have a better finger on the pulse of what's important for the next generation. I mean, you know, 
we don't need a bunch of 80 year olds telling us that climate change isn't real. You know what I'm saying? Like we need to take care of our planet. We need to figure out a way to do that so that there is a future for this planet. And uh, Nerds Vote has really done so much just in getting the word out to, to, to find out where to vote, how to vote, N not telling you how to vote, but telling you what's happening in your local uh, races and everything like that. And it's just invaluable. Um, if you haven't voted yet, check it out. Um, their swag is great. I'm rocking my sweet uh, Catherine Hellion Nerds Vote uh, Lady Liberty shirt. Um, you know, it's every penny goes towards making this thing run. I know for a fact, Courtney Taylor is one of my best friends. Uh, she does not make a penny from this. Every single cent goes back into this company, into this nonprofit, to making sure that you guys have what you need when you go to the polls. And it's just, when I first was introduced to it, and I told Courtney this uh, when we had her on about two weeks ago, uh, I was just blown away by the creativity, the, you know, backup what all of us had, and, you know, the, the big names that have also backed this, which I think is paramount the people that have either undecided as to what they want to do or if they even want to vote or not, I think this is an excellent and quite frankly genius way, you know, to attract those people. And also on a personal note, it reminded me that I actually had to update uh, a few of the information that I had in order to re-register to vote. So on a personal note, it worked out for me definitely. But uh, so guys, if you guys haven't already, make sure that you know you go out and vote tuesday and if you still you know need some more info definitely check it out it can be linked down below uh if you're watching this later on youtube but let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen real quick and it doesn't stop with this election you know what okay. i mean like we're still when we're able to go to conventions again we're still going to be out there we're still going to be helping people get registered to vote because it, it doesn't stop on tuesday right we're going to have another election in two years for midterms and then we'll have another election two years after that like it is important to get involved it is important to know what's happening because this is your country guys and uh and you should have a say in how it's run hell yeah i will hell yeah hell yeah and so with that I want to go perfectly into the next segment, which is, of course, and like I always say, guys, now is your last chance, if you haven't already, either message VisionCon directly, your comments and questions, or put it in the live chat, because ladies and gentlemen, we're in the plug zone. Sissy Jones, now is your opportunity to plug, promote, advertise, whatever verb you want to use, anything you want. The floor is yours. Oh, my God. Uh, the pressure. <laughs> um, I want to say uh, there's a really wonderful um, Disney show I've been working on called The Owl House that just uh, landed on Disney Plus on Saturday. So if you've been waiting to watch The Owl House season one, it's now available. I love this show. It's so much fun. And it's it's not just for kids. It's really quirky and funny and silly. And, uh, and it's got a lot of heart. Um, there's also a wonderful little indie game coming out soon, I think, uh, called Call of the Sea um that's very lovecraftian uh, and i'm not going to say anything else because i don't want to lose my job um but it's a really cool game and i can't wait for people to get their hands on it um criminy what else i don't know there's like there's like a bunch of stuff that i can't talk about because video games <laughs> sure. yeah. so keep an eye out like i i'm always posting on my twitter and my instagram sissy speaks um when I can, I will post about it there. Um, otherwise, um, I don't know. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are. I don't know what else to say. Well, no, you nailed it. And all of those links that we just talked about, if you missed any of them, if you guys watch this live on Facebook, Elizabeth put all of those in the live chat. Thank you again, Elizabeth, as always. You're the knight in shining armor. Or if you're watching this later on YouTube, gonna be down there in the description box below. And with that, we're out of the plug zone and going right into our final segment, viewers' comments and questions. So like I always do, guys, gonna do it a 50-50 split. Gonna take from the live chat and from the messengers. So give me just one sec. Da -da -da. Okay, so I'm gonna start us out with Zachary, who, not me, uh, who wanted to say, give me, let me hit see more real quick. Okay, so you kinda had a two-pronged question. The first one being, uh, hi, Sissy, how do you, feel looking back now on The Wolf Among Us. It was my introduction to you, the comic book series of fables and your performance as Kelsey. 
I loved working on that game and, you know, um, RIP Telltale. Um, but I actually had recorded something like, like 10 to 15 hours of dialogue for Kelsey. They had this whole arc that they were going to do. She was going to be the love interest for Bigby and Da, 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 da. and then the way that things go it just ended up on the cutting room floor and she was there for like five minutes so um i was really bummed about that but obviously i loved working with everybody at telltale um and i was super excited about uh the second season of wolf not that kelsey was going to have any part in it but um you know it was just such a beautifully done game but yeah i was really happy to be a part of it would i have liked my my part to be bigger hell yeah of course <laughs> well, which i but, uh, I think perfect segue way to his next question, which is, do you think that Kelsey Brannigan deserves her own spinoff game during the events of what happened to her during the story? I think it could be really fun. I do. You know, you have a human walking through this, this world of, of storybook characters, learning on the fly what's actually happening. I think it could be really cool. Um, but I don't make games, so I need game <laughs> devs out there. Call me! <laughs> <laughs> well, a bunch of people are also saying that they're looking forward to Call of the Sea. Uh, uh, Zachary and Summer, which also Summer also said, thank you for voicing Lilith. She means a lot to me, me being her. <laughs> and I'm then, so glad to hear that. She means a lot to me too. Yeah. She, uh, you know, she's, she's a really special character. It's a really special game, uh, show. Show. <laughs> well, uh, Elizabeth <laughs> tuned in and wanted to know, she says, PAX is always the best. Do you enjoy interacting with the cosplayers? Of course. Every time I see a Chloe cosplayer, I'm like, call your mother! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really cool. I've seen a Delilah cosplay a couple of times. Um, you know, I see Chloe almost every single con that I go to, and that's always really cool. And I've seen uh, people have been doing Lilith cosplay for Halloween and sending it to me. It's been really, really awesome. I love it. Like, I, I, listen, at heart, I'm just a dork from Idaho. So the fact that somebody <laughs> actually cares about my characters and dresses up like them, it, it, it takes my breath away. I really love it. <laughs> well, Chris tuned in and said, hey, oh, oh, all right. Okay. Hey, Sissy, what was it like voicing Knockout in Suicide Squad Hell to Pay? Super fun. So that one I got to be in the booth with Julie Nathanson, who's another incredible actress. Um, and I really didn't know much about it when I got in there. And then they were like, cool, so here's Knockout. Um, she's this total badass. She's a lesbian. Um, this is her girlfriend. She's super hot. And I was like, okay. Um, they're like, do you have a shower scene? I'm like, it's animated. <laughs> so uh, it was really fun. It was a great time. That's a um, she didn't die, so who knows what's going to happen. It's always nice. Well, uh, Aaron yeah. came in with two questions. Uh, his first one was, because you voiced a witch in Owl oh, oh, okay. Because you voiced a witch in Owl House, would you want to mentor either Harry Potter or Mildred Hubble from Worst Witch? Mildred. Is Harry's it? fine. He's good. He's got, he's got his own thing happening. Sure, Give me yeah. the worst witch. I'll whip her into shape. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he also want to know, do you think Lilith would get along with Hocus Pocus Sanderson sisters? Why or why not? No, because she thinks she's smarter than everybody. So <laughs> she would be like, why, why do you witches think that you belong around me? Oh. Please. <laughs> I will cast spells around you in circles. <laughs> She's very arrogant. For sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to dip into the messenger, guys. So give me one sec. All righty. So Christy tuned in and wanted to know, what are some of your hardest characters to voice throughout the years? That's a really good question. Um, there was one that I did for a game called Let It Die. Um, where I played a player character who didn't have any actual words because they didn't want to have to localize it later. <laughs> so they just had me come in and do a bunch of like, grunts and screams and barfs and snorts. And like, I had to like eat an apple really fast and like gag on it at one point. And I, you know, it was a very strange session. And I was like, I like words. <laughs> I think I'll stick to words from here on out. Sure. <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, Fury was a little, Fury was taxing because she was in such a deep part of my register and I wasn't very good at that point about warming up and cooling down. Um, so I definitely had some, uh, some silent days after those sessions, but she was so much fun. 
<laughs> All right. Well, Allison tuned in and wanted to know, are there any hobbies that you do outside of voice acting? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I love to paint. Um, I'm not very good at it, but I love it. <laughs> um, I really like to cook. Uh, you know, I've been cooking up a storm with, you know, quarantine and, and, you know, filling up a freezer <laughs> every chance I get. Um, uh, I like to read, I like to listen to podcasts. I'm a huge fan of the adventure zone. So, yeah. you know, I've listened to that top to bottom like four times. Um, I like playing, you know, role play games with my friends. I've done a couple of one-offs here and there and, uh, that's been super fun. I'm also working on another project with another friend of mine, um, not as a voice actor, but as kind of more behind the scenes, which I'm super excited about. Um, I've kind of toyed around with making my own game, but that hasn't happened yet because I'm not a coder. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, listen, if I had more hours in the day, there would be more stuff I could do. Um, my cat will tell you I'm not home as much as he would like me to be, especially when it's not quarantine. <laughs> but I do what I can. <laughs> well, we got time for one more question, guys, and that's going to be from my boy Jeremy, who wrote in and said, Hi, Sissy. I thought your BAFTA speech was very inspiring. Coming from a voice actor myself, I wanted to ask, does it ever get very surreal? I mean, that's the pinnacle of surreal. That moment was the pinnacle of surreal. And working on a Disney show, like I, I'm a Disney witch, you guys. I'm a Disney witch. Like I bypassed princess and I went straight to witch. Like <laughs> it doesn't get much more surreal than that. Um, yes, I mean, every day, and I don't say this to be glib, literally every day I wake up and I'm like, I get to do this. Like on my worst day, it's still pretty freaking great. You know what I mean? Um, but the, 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 that moment at the BAFTAs, I'm still like, did that actually pinch? Like, <laughs> I'm, did that really happen? <laughs> it was also the year of La La Land, you know, when they accidentally called La La Land. So I, I lived in fear for a while that they were going to be like, no, no, we meant to give that to someone else. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just, I love what I do so much. And I, I feel so grateful that I get to do this to make a living. You know, I, I've, I've worked in a job where I, I hated everything. And it's soul sucking. It's really, really hard. Um, so to be able to do something I love, uh, I, I, I count my blessings every day. Truly. Well, I, well, I can't think of a better note to leave off on. So ladies and gentlemen, that's about all the time we've got for episode 34 of Vision Con Live. Now, before we wrap things up, Sissy, any final thoughts to leave us on? Go out, vote, be kind, be good to each other, take care of one another. Um, we're all in this together. We might be in different boats, but we're all in the same storm. <sighs> Got goosebumps from that one. Woo! Woo! All right, guys. Well, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 34 of Vision Con Live. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I, of course, am your host, Zach Wilson, but much more importantly, this has been my special guest, Sissy Jones. Oh, my God, and a cat. <laughs> my cat. Oh. Sorry. Sorry for that squeal, guys. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for so much for tuning in. And until next time, guys, always remember that life's better when you've got friends to share it with.